Okay, Internet, today I'm going to be working on this little fella. This is the Godekin Talitanius. And I've got actually several of them. And the plan is to combine the best parts of each to have a pretty nice one. So uh, just to have a general idea before I start digging in, um, there are slight variations. Hopefully this won't be an issue, but you can see here this one has a Main Japan sticker that's white. And this one has a Made in Japan sticker that is black. And this one has no Made in Japan sticker at all. All three of them have the Y and K copyright, GB01, the Popey, the Beltanius logo, all of that. So this one here has the nicest front thighs, but the back have kind of this nasty tarnishing or whatever. Um, this one is not bad, but broken headpiece. And um, it's fairly chipped up metal on the legs. Uh, Stickers kind of peeling here. This one also has a peeling sticker, and uh, the legs have that kind of tarnishing on both sides, really. And there's also a spring in here that makes the legs stay tight, which seems to be missing on this particular one. So, um, I think the plan is to use as much of this one as I can because it looks the nicest. And I'll probably be grabbing the back of the legs off of this one and put them on this one. And we'll see where we go from there. Um, if you've never played with uh, Daltanius before, um, I'm sure you've noticed there's different head crest things. This is a, a little jet in the TV show. And um, when the smaller robot combines with the there's a lion here, it combines with the lion and the uh, sort of spaceship thing. The uh, This crest somehow transforms into that crest. And uh, it just sort of melts into that shape, kind of like a get a robo. But you can't really do that with toys, so there's two versions and you just kind of got to swap it, so... That's how it is. So let's get started on the fix. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to this one. This one definitely has the best back legs. So I'm going to start by taking that off of this one. Be careful because, as I say, there is a spring in here. And I have noticed spring variation as well. Okay, so you can see the spring there. That's all that's holding this on. But there's also a uh, screw in the side here holding this in. And here's another thing you should be aware of. There's actually a ball bearing in the knee. So be careful about that. And try not to chip the paint when you're taking these off, or at least not chip it any further than it may already be chipped because I feel like these die-cast, painted die-cast ones, it's always some chipping, or at least almost always. Okay. So, I don't know how well you can see that, but, whoops, there it goes. There's a ball bearing that's inside the knee. So don't lose that. If you look at how the uh, the knee plastic works, there's just a divot in here that the ball bearing goes inside of. And then you put it in the knee and it just gives it a, a point to uh, pivot at. Alright, so we got this.
this one off. So we're gonna take it off of the nicer one and replace it. So let's uh, undo that. Again, be cautious about that spring in there. which is which. Okay, spring there, this part off, unscrew this, try not to chip the paint while you're doing it. While I'm doing this, are you at all familiar with the uh, relationship between Zeltanius and Voltron? You may have noticed that there, see there's a big line involved. When uh, World Events Productions was negotiating with Toei for cartoons to use in Voltron, uh, they got a, a bunch of tapes from Japan, and none of them were translated or anything. It was just, here are some cartoons in Japanese. Pick the ones you like. And uh, Golion was not among the cartoons available. What was available was Daltanius, and uh, World Events Productions wanted Daltanius. They also apparently wanted uh, Diarugger 15 and uh, Albegus. So when they were ordering the master tapes from Toei, whoops, there goes that. Okay, spring. Okay, I guess that makes sense. All right, so in the leg pit, there's a spring inside there, ball bearings inside of that. Anyway, so um, when they were requesting the master tapes from Toei, they said they wanted the lion one, not knowing that there was another lion show in Japan, and so the Toei people sent them over the master tapes for Beast King Go Lion instead of Daltanius, and uh, they were surprised but they ended up liking it more, and they just went with it. And that's how we ended up with Voltron. Because, uh, you know, Go Lion was, like, I believe, a 1981 show, so it was a few years old when they were doing this in 84. But, um, you know, it worked out, and uh, everyone loves Voltron in the States. And, you know, there's still there's a new Voltron show that, you know, I think a couple of years ago, they were like, a whole bunch of seasons for it. So, yeah, that was a Netflix show, I think. Anyway, maybe it's a good thing for World Events Productions and for, you know, American fans or whatever that uh, we wound up with Line instead of Daltanius. But I really like Daltanius as a robot. It's a really cool robot. Um, I think I've seen one episode of the show in raw Japanese. I would really love to see the whole thing in English. But, um, you know... Make do with what we gotta get. Okay, so here is the uh, more worn one. I'm gonna put this one back over here and uh, reassemble this one. Now, be careful when reassembling this because you gotta make sure this divot in the thigh lines up with the ball bearing on the leg. And you have to make sure that it's lined up, up and down this bit so that the screw can go through it. So here we go. Okay, that worked. Right. Let me lift this guy up. And oh yeah, I did want to mention. Yeah, okay. See the difference here? This spring is longer than that spring. I don't think it said it's more compressed from age or over-tightening or something. I think it's just one of those deals where there were factory variations. And I already showed that this one has a different Made in Japan sticker than the, the other one with the different spring on the left. So who knows? Okay. All right, so works good, tight, clicky. The ball bearing mechanism is in there. And now we have one that has pretty nice chrome, both front and back. 
And um, let's see here, this one, some with the broken headpiece and the Made in Japan flag sticker. And this one is the one that doesn't have the Made in Japan sticker at all. And the, the, the chrome here is better, it's not perfect, but it's better than the other one. Um, but this one has the nicer head. So I think, you know what I might do is I might swap the head too, because I think overall this one is nicer, the one on the left, and the one on the right. So I think I might swap the heads on these and just sort of put the nicest chrome on this body, the one that has the Made in Japan sticker in black. So I'm going to do that, I think. All right, so... Just unscrew this puppy. And like I say, this one here without a Made in Japan sticker at all is uh, the one that does not have this, the spring that's meant to be there in the leg, which is why it's so floppy. Missing spring. Too bad. Okay, so... Whoops. Ball bearing, right. Let's just compare these two leg pieces and see which one looks nicer. Oh, definitely this one on the left. This one has like a real, I don't know what, defect in the paint. I'm trying to get it to focus, sorry. Oh, there we go. It's a real paint defect here. Looks very bad. So I'm going to leave that one on what is ultimately the worst one, or will be when I'm done swapping all these parts, and uh, here is the, the divot with the spring in it, the ball bearing goes in that divot, like that, okay, so I want the leg piece off of this one, so I'm going to take it out right here, This one's really tight. Okay. Again, watch out for that ball bearing and watch out for the screw that the ball bearing goes on. So put that over there. And I'm just going to swap this right now. I'm trying not to knock anything out of alignment. There we go. Okay. Oh, worth noting, um, the screw that goes into the side of the leg here looks different than the screw with the spring on it that goes in the back of the knee. Um, the back of the knee one has thicker treads, and um, the end is kind of pointier, whereas the end is totally flat on the one that goes on the side, just in case you're trying to figure out which one goes where after the fact. Okay. Got that in there, and now we'll put in the screw. Okay. So that's nice and tight. And we'll just stick it in here. So even though we don't have a spring for this, it'll stay together. Although it will definitely be floppy. I think I can find a spring out of a, know, a pen or something that would be roughly the same size and make things work a little better on this jankier. I guess Atlas is the name of the smaller robot. Oh, this does not want to go in. Hmm. Well, 
Well, I guess that's about as good as it's going to get without that spring because it's just going to flop and flop. All right. So let's get this other leg put back together. Again, divot here, ball bearing here. Not line it up right. Okay, whoops, there goes the ball bearing. Do not lose the ball bearing, folks. I mean, I know it's possible to get replacements, but shh, try and get one the right size. It's not my idea of a good time. There we go. I'll put that screw back in. Remember, it's the one with the short, or the, um, the treads that are narrower, I guess, with the flat end. It goes on the side here. One other thing worth mentioning is there is a pretty good quality bootleg, vintage bootleg, of Daltanius um, called God Sphinx that is out there, and it's probably pretty easy to confuse the two if you're not super familiar. Um, the biggest tell on the God Sphinx versus Deltanius is um, this part here. Deltanius has this mechanism where it like hides the front in the uh, spaceship mode, and there's a little button to make it launch out. And in um, God Sphinx, it's just always out. It's just uh, one molded diecast piece the whole way. Okay. So we're going to stick this leg back on. There we go. So that's pretty tight now. That's nice. Snap back. Uh, looking pretty good now. I think we'll still swap this other one because it's still a little bit nicer on that one. And, you know, we want to get the nicest ones over on this bit. So I'm going to take this off of here, put it on this one down here. And then swap these other ones. This is a complicated robot shell game, isn't it? Don't get confused which robot is which. Okay. Let's just compare this left leg in terms of... No, see, this has that weird... I don't know what... The paint damage or flaw or something, it just looks really bad on the side of the robot there, so we are definitely just taking the thigh out. Okay, so put that down there, and uh, as before, we're going to unscrew from the side, which is kind of stuck a little bit. Okay. So ball bearing right there. Be careful. I'm gonna swap this one. Okay. on the side out. All right. There we go. Screw on the side out. Being cautious because of the ball bearing. Swap that part over there. Ball bearings still in the right place. Put 
that in. Okay, and then screw those back in there on the side. Okay. And then you put this in here. And where did I put... Oh, right there it is. Okay. And then we just screw that in. Okay. And then we have the least damaged chrome all around. Nice tight knees. Looking good there. Give them the fist. And he has the fancy antlers for the combined mount. Okay, so this one here, yeah, of the remaining knee parts, this is nicer. So I'm going to put this knee back on the one in the worst shape. Oops, knocked that ball bearing out of place. One more time, you can watch that ball bearing business. That's how it goes. All right. And like I say, be cautious about the uh, the spring in underneath the ball bearing. Easy to forget it's there. You got to make sure you line up the knee with the red leg part so that this uh, screw can actually get through. If it's not lined up, it won't screw in. That's exactly what's happening now. I mean, if you want, you can look in, sort of eyeball it, To be able to see the hole all the way through. Yep, there we go. If you've got it lined up, this should be pretty foolproof, though. Okay, last bit. Okay, so let's flip back out. So we got these guys here. Um, so the other thing I was going to do was swap this head to this body because this head has a damaged bit here. I mean, it still holds the thing and everything, but it's, it's damaged. And this one overall is in worse shape. So let's see if it's easy to take this off. My theory is that we'll have to probably disassemble the chest entirely to get to it, but maybe we'll be lucky and it's actually easier than it seems. There is a big screw here, but there's also a little screw in the head here. I'm going to use a smaller screwdriver bit, hopefully. Hopefully that's all it takes, but I doubt it. Hmm, guess not. Okay, we're going to have to go into the chest, I suppose. 
I mean, this one does not want to go... This screw fell out of the head. Oh, no, I'm wrong. It does come right off. Okay, excellent. You don't have to go into the chest. So this, yeah, that's all it takes. There's just this screw hole in the back of the neck, and the head just pops right off. Cool. That's easy. Thank you for your simple designs, Popey. You make repairs a breeze. broken one, and here's the unbroken one, put it right on there, actually if I was smart I would have put the screw in the neck before I dropped it on, but that's okay. One thing is that that is kind of a little hard to get to because of this neck crest thing. But, uh, try not to, try not to strip it. But, uh, that looks pretty good. And I'll put the nicer one of these in there. And we have two pretty nice Alice's and one kind of crappy one. That's not crappy, it's just nowhere near as nice. Okay. All right, now we should probably put this in the neck while we still have it disconnected so it's easier. All right. While I'm at it, how about some hands? There, that looks pretty good, I think. So this one goes to the trash pile. No, I'm kidding. This one goes to the trade bait pile. So the other thing I wanted to deal with, besides just the little robot Atlas, is um, I've got some lion issues and some gumper little spaceship issues. So two lions look pretty similar. However, there's some weird variations between them. So, yeah, this one on the right is in a little bit of nicer condition, but that doesn't explain this. This is not plastic here. This is painted die-cast metal. Notice the difference, right? They are not the same shade. And now you're thinking, oh, well, this is probably one of those bootlegs you mentioned. One of those, one of those god sphinxes. Except, mm, no, no, it's not. GBO2, Popey, YK. Well, maybe the other one. No, trust me. <laughs> GBO2, YK, they are both legit. So this is an actual factory variation of some sort. Um, the other thing I noticed that's pretty weird is uh, the color of this plastic trigger. It's more of a 
deeper yellow on this one, or is this one it's kind of a faded one? This one um, does not want to stay in place. I'm going to take a look at it when I disassemble it and see if I can figure out what's causing that. Um, this one, on the other hand, is broken. And I know you're thinking, oh my god, the plastic broke. That's unfortunate. Except, no, actually, it's the die cast that broke, strangely enough. Usually, it's not die cast that breaks on these robot toys, but that's definitely what happened here. The metal itself broke. So, you know, you could probably display this one like that, but what interests me in the broken one is two things. First, there's nicer chrome on these little sticking out grabby things. Um, and the second thing is, compare these guys. Yeah, this is not plastic, that's paint. They have a very different yellow paint on them, and it's not just that front part either. These uh, side pieces are also a different yellow. It's not as pronounced, but it's definitely different. And once again, these are both totally legit. Have the... You know, I guess it's the other leg that has the Bondi, or Popey, rather, logo on it. Yep. Y and K. Like these are legit. Popey, PB81. Legit, legit, legit. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap this more worn chrome piece here between them. And, um, also see if I can get this to stop popping out without being triggered. So, on this one, it's easy because it's broken, so all I have to do is just kind of... Oh, there we go. Simple. But, for the one that's not broken, I think what we're probably going to have to do is, um, just have to unscrew this bottom part. I don't see how else we could get in there. I mean, I guess we could unscrew the outside leg, and that, that might have to happen too, but... I mean, it seems like... It really seems like it's just the bottom that's sticking in there. Actually, you know what we could do? Before I go disassembling, is I can disassemble this bottom part, because actually it kind of looks like... Maybe that would just take these wheels off. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's find out together. So I actually think this screw here is probably only to hold this plate on for the wheels. I don't think maybe this is not actually going to make much of a difference. Um, this screw that is apparently missing for sure holds this onto the bottom. Missing piece. The metal piece is just gone. Okay. Let's see what that does. Oh, you know what, though? See, that's interesting. Okay. This uh, this screw is not what's holding this little piece of plastic over the wheels on. That's actually these little tabs up here. So, the screw seems to be going into this metal piece that broke off, which is to say the bottom of this foot platform here. So, I think we actually do need to remove those, this, and this to get in the foot good. So, uh, let's do that. Let's, uh, keep this separated so I don't get confused about what came from what. And, uh, try just doing the bottom and see if that gets us there. Not seem to be any kind of 
springs or anything in this part, so... Oh, I lied. There's a spring right there. Okay. This is probably also uh, the mechanism for making the foot shoot out. So that's interesting. But um, we're not going to mess with that for this one. We're just going to... Try not to make those springs go flying. And just get this metal piece, or this, it's not metal, it's chromed plastic. Get this chromed plastic piece popped off and replaced with the nicer one. And just stick this guy back together. So, see this uh, yellow peg with the spring on it? Plugs into this base here. So very interesting how this works. I didn't realize there was a spring in that part at all. I'm like, where did my screws go? They're still in the robot. Okay. Yep, looks good. And now, that nicer chrome piece on this gumper foot. And uh, I'll put this back in the broken one. And this, uh, this screw isn't doing a heck of a lot with that uh, piece of die cast it connects to being broken, but you know, whatever. Let's do it. You know, whatever. We'll just uh, put it back in for thoroughness sake and to not lose the bit. I will lose that part. And so this for sure is missing a bunch of springs and stuff. It's not just that that piece of metal broke off. Oh, <laughs> I ended up actually turning it while I was doing that. That's funny. There we go. Yeah, now it can stand and sort of look like it's not destroyed. Okay. Now let's uh, do the same for this one, and uh, while we're digging in there, we'll see if we can't fix that spring system on this one. Okay, so here's the spring. Interesting. I don't know how well you can see this, but basically there's a big long spring here connected to this peg, and the other end it goes on that red peg right there. See? Okay, unbunch the spring. Just keep in mind if you don't have that bottom part on when you squeeze it up like that, it's liable to wedge out. Um, another thing to watch out for when you're reassembling this is you have to be, this uh, sticking out foot part has to be behind this ridge. Okay. Okay. So make sure that your spring is here and your spring is there. Everything's lined up. And you can put the foot back on. For sure, have to line this yellow peg with the spring on it up with that slot right there in the red part, or it'll never go back together. Okay. 
Oh, <laughs> maybe I should put the chrome part back in. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yellow bit. Lined up. Screw that in. Yeah, we'll screw that one in. By the way, I think these uh, small screws here are identical. No variations in between. Uh, it still doesn't make this want to stay any better. Oh well. I guess it doesn't matter because this is the beater one anyway. I was hoping that fooling with that stuff would make this stay better, but it just doesn't. Oh well. At least my two good ones stay nicely. Alright. So now... Very careful doing this. You don't want to mess up that paint if you can avoid it. Uh -huh. Whoops. <laughs> there goes that missile launcher. Okay. Missile launcher. You're going to pop out like that, right? Okay. Yeah, so that all that's holding this arm in is this bit here on the bottom. So we're going to unscrew that, pull the arm out. Okay. We'll set this down. And that was the right leg. So we'll do the same thing for this right leg. Try and keep these uh, screws in the blue plastic part. Incidentally, this does not seem to be the toxic blue plastic popey disease. It seems to be a, a different formulation of blue. It doesn't seem to be the exact color of the one that always disintegrates. So I'm less concerned about messing with it. Oh, there we go. I just lost myself a little washer. Okay. And the screw popped out. All right. Okay. Let's just get this one unscrewed. And put that washer back where it belongs. Okay. Swap this extendo leg thingy. Because the chrome is definitely nicer. Okay. Got it. Those four screws are still in place. Okay. Well, I've got this disassembled, compare the colors of the yellow on the trigger. It's not a matter of discoloration. They're slightly different colors. It's just a different factory run, I suppose. Different plastic material or something. Okay. So... Oops, jeez. Okay, spring, you go there. All right. 
Gringo's here. So there's a slot here on the inside. And this uh, spring, just a peg on it, goes in like that. And then you have the wing part, which goes on this bit here. So there's a, a peg here, wing part goes on the peg. And then it just needs to be right there so it can slide over this. Then we have to get the spring part in, which is simple enough. So it rests on this bump here. Goes into this space here, and then this space here. Right, so it keeps it all in line, and then on top of that, you have this little plastic washer that has been causing me grief. So put this like that. Should stay together. Okay. Then all we have to do is put the top plate back on. Now jostling anything. The biggest thing here, get that, yeah, there we go. Got that trigger through the hole, all lined up. And we just have to screw it back together. Okay. Okay, and just make sure everything's still working. Yep, works fine. Good. Don't have a missile to fire out of there, but if I did, I'm pretty confident it would fire. Okay. Leg. Oops. Jeez. All right, let's get this other one back together. So. thing in place. All right, and then put this on without disturbing this little thing here and also getting it through. That. Yep, there we go. Okay. Screw this in. Okay, that leg is looking good. Now, grab these guys. Oh yeah, I'm holding their individual weapons. So um, yeah, there are a number of weapons that are meant for the. Uh, let's not have you drive away. Meant for the uh, Atlas smaller robot. Atlas Atlas. However, it's supposed to be pronounced. Whoops. Just to make things simpler, let's just kind of get that chunk out of the way. We'll come back, put it back on in a minute. Be very careful with these. These are prone to breakage. All right, so as I recall, the deal is the chest goes like this to get big. Yeah, and this is. Okay, and then this part here folds up into the chest. Try 
try not to bang the metal against itself and chip it even more. There we go. All right. Well, let's grab a lion. This lion tight joint. Oh wait, that needs to stay out. What am I doing? Yeah, it goes like this. Oof. There's definitely a lot in common with uh, Go Lion or Voltron here with the lion and the legs and how this works, but it's not exactly the same. As much as I do enjoy the uh, Dyrugger 15 slash vehicle Voltron, I do kind of think that maybe it would have been a better move for them to uh, use uh, both Go Lion and uh, Dy or excuse me, both Go Lion and Deltanius for Voltron because it's a lot more in common thematically, you know, it's got the sort of European cross logo thingy, reminiscent of medieval times stuff, and, uh, you know, which was constructing this little Beltanius robot. The, uh, the way the legs connect is very similar to the uh, Go Lion, Voltron, or whatever, with the same kind of locking mechanism in the back there. Okay. And we'll give him the horns. Here we are. Is that backwards? That's backwards. Okay. This is horns. And small fists. Okay, notice that this uh, right fist has a hole in it so that it can hold the bow and arrow because it has this one and this one. It kind of snaps in extra in this bit here. There we go. And it's another big fist. Give him a giant sword. There we go. So that's our fully put together Deltanius. Improved by having all, it's got all of the nicest parts that I have. Chrome looks good throughout. The only thing that's a little less than ideal for me, it looks like I have a little piece of the styrofoam in the box. I think it's a little less than ideal for me is this, uh, there's definitely some yellowing here on the lion face. So I'm going to be keeping an eye out for a lion that has a not yellowed face. So I can swap that. And um, the only other thing here is this toe part that jets out that also has yellowing. So if I can find one of those without yellowing there, I'll probably place that too. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to reassemble the rest of my beater one and uh, call it a day. So if you want to do some repairs on your Deltanius, hopefully this has assisted you and you can do it without having to go through all the trial and error that I did. Okay, that's it. Bye, Internet. Hey everybody, I'm um, just doing a little follow-up video on the power supply for the Amiga 500 I got from Amiga Store. Dot EU. Okay, so here is the original one, one that was manufactured incorrectly or, or whatever, and here is the new one Got right here in the box. So I'm going to open that up, and uh, then we're going to take a look at it and see if the problem is resolved. 
Uh, for the record, I got a power supply from the Polish seller uh, Electroware underscore PL, which worked fine. So uh, hopefully this new one from the Mega Store works. And um, my friend has agreed to examine them with me and we'll check and see if the difference is visible. Oh, it looks like it comes with a pen that says Amiga. Ooh. And there's a little note saying, sorry for your trouble, which I appreciate. Okay, so here's the new one. Well packaged, so that's good. So, it looks pretty identical, which makes sense. I mean, came from the same place. Both have the same kind of quality control sticker. Uh, both of them have the European style plug. And uh, it did not come with the little cheap adapter that the other one did. Uh, I still have the $7 one I bought from a local computer shop, which is what I'll have to use with this. But, you know, if you're an American uh, or a Canadian, North American, I guess, in general, you're probably still not going to want to buy this because this is not great. And yes, you can get an adapter like this and stick it in your wall, but it's still not ideal. It'd be better to just have you know, an American style plug. But um, let's take it down to my friend's workbench and see how the values look.